Welcome back to the main theater. I am joined by writer and producer of the most iconic Simpsons, uh, Matt Selman. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure. So I'm sure you're a very busy man. Um, so I will get to the uh, Fox TV fan questions, if you don't mind. Um, sure. The very fans first always question. Have the best question. <laughs> first question is from uh, Nope. So the name is spelled N-O-A-P. So I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. Uh, how many rooms is in the house or how many rooms does the house have? Yeah, I know. Like, so I, they sent me the questions in advance, and I meant to like find this out for you, Nope or No App, but I didn't. So I guess we could count them together, right? Kitchen, living room, TV room, dining room, garage might be a room, foyer not mm -hmm. really a room. Then master bathroom, Bart's bedroom, Lisa's bedroom, Maggie's bedroom. So just someone running tally on screen, I assume. And uh, then sometimes there's like a magical rumpus room, which may or may not exist. So that number plus or plus one sometimes. All right. I didn't there count. You go. I lost count. Hopefully you are counting. Nope. Um, and uh, thanks for That's that. That's the answer. canonical uh, number of rooms. Also, they have a basement. Yes. If you count that. Also, that in any episode, sure. the house can do anything. Because it's a cartoon. So I'm going to say 10 plus or minus five rooms. <laughs> there we go. That's are people answer. betting on any of my uh, – are they wagering on any of these answers? Like I know Fox is really into sports betting now. Maybe – There's probably going to be, be a wager on that. that answer. So we'll see. Next, <laughs> next question is from Mega Chan. What's your overall inspiration when making episodes? Great question, Mega Chan. Um, to me, the main insp inspiration is like, first thing is like, is this something we've never done before to some degree? <laughs> so like, does it feel fresh? Is it new? Is it reflecting something new in the world that's funny or sad or awful or great or weird or dumb? So like, you know, is it worthy of being an episode in the 700s of the Simpsons that have done so many stories. So that's the hardest part, right? To keep it fresh, yeah. to keep it, to, even if the emotional dynamics are stories you've told before, like Homer and Lisa don't connect or whatever, are we telling that story using something new that the world has given us? So that's mm. like the most important thing when envisioning a show. Is this something that feels new current that we haven't done a thousand times or if we have done a thousand times how have we disguised it so that's that's my long answer to that question mega mega friend and then i mean it's it's probably why the show is able to work for so long and so consistently at such a high level is because you guys are pretty much evolving with the world in in real life so i mean I am, uh, I'm hoping for a hundred more years for you guys. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a hundred more years for society. First of all, yes. um, Same. And then if the Simpsons is part of that, that's a bonus. Um, yeah. but you know, all the, the world, the world does keep delivering insane stuff to Simpson eyes and to Springfield eyes. So the world is, is delivering on that regard. Yeah, it's like they say you can't you can't make this up. So <laughs> next, we tried me. next we question. Yeah, exactly. Um, next question is from Juliet. If you could bring back one past character, who would it be? Oh, Juliet! Oh, why didn't I prepare good answers, Juliet? Oh, I screwed <laughs> up. Um, okay. Well. Look, I'll just give you the fan favorite answer, which is certainly something we all think about, which of course is Hank Scorpio, mm. beloved character, iconic character, right? Probably one of the top five guest appearances, Albert Brooks. But how do you bring back Hank Scorpio in a way that's worthy? That's doesn't that's not 
markedly inferior to the first time he was on the show. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if the fans care about this, but there was about a four day period in the writing of the Simpsons movie, which came out in 2007, 14 years ago, uh, in which the villain of that, this is not a secret. The villain of the Simpsons movie was briefly Hank Scorpio as, as part of the rewriting process, as we were trying to find the character of the best villain. And we did a whole rewrite where we scorpio the villain of where where Cargill, I guess his name was. And then we decided it was too inside. No one really like the average movie goer did not know who Scorpio was. The Simpsons fans knew, but in making the Simpsons movie, we had to really appeal to everyone, not just Simpsons fans. And um, so that we did try once to bring Scorpio back, but I think that was probably the right choice to un-Scorpio the movie. And, but I will still hold out a dream that we could do and bring back Scorpio in a way that felt like a big, great idea that was worthy of his re-inclusion. Hmm. Well, Maybe I just lied and first. said I didn't prepare. Maybe I lied and said I didn't prepare answers, and now I'm acting like they're just off the top of my head. So you think they're better? Like with improv, I mean, these are really you know, great you, answers and extremely thorough. You know, how with improv, you go to an improv show and you're so nervous that yeah. they're not going to think of anything good to say. You lower your standards, <laughs> and you're just so relieved yeah. that they say anything at all funny. You're just like, oh, thank. You're laughing, but you're also feeling the joy of not being self-conscious for the failings of the improv actors this is that <laughs> on low stakes well, you're the absolutely you're absolutely crushing it now i'm confused as if <laughs> i i think you tricked us so <laughs> good one sir good good move this next one is I from a that. very interesting name uh the crispy one uh what's your favorite treehouse of horror special Okay, well, oh my God, they're all so good. I got to say, I'm going to throw in a vote for a late, a late one here, and it's an it's an unofficial Treehouse of Horror. It's the Thanksgiving of Horror, which we did a, two yes. years ago. I love it. I know it's it's a, a different holiday than Treehouse, but it has all the craziness of a Treehouse. It's got horrible violence. It's got tension and scares. It's got you know, terrifying societal commentary and sorry, my iPhone just rang and, um, um, I don't know. I just think the animation is so good. I think it's really scary. It ends with live, terrifying live video footage of Bart from the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade yeah. with spooky music. I don't know. I know it's, it's an unofficial treehouse, but I, I I love it. I cherish it. And a lot it has a lot of mutilated children. So there you go, the crispy one. Another beautifully thought out, thorough answer. <laughs> You're definitely tricking all of us. The next <laughs> question is from Omer. If you could pick one episode that everybody will remember you by, ooh, which one would it be? No oh, pressure. Oh, Mary, this would have been a great one. Great one to prep for. I just answered that you can't be the treehouse of Thanksgiving. From, remember me. I mean, okay, well, off the top of my head, I promise. But so, you know, this is like a question about, oh, Mary, you're asking a question that is about the theme of ego, right? You're asking, yes. what's going to remember me? <laughs> and trilogy of Error which came out at the, in season 12. And it was a, one of the first shows that when I was a younger, newer writer on the show that I really went full crazy and did a big conceptual, insane episode. It was sort of a riff off the movie Go and it had three interconnecting stories and the lots of, you know, insane plot ambition. And, you know, I think that was a show where like as a newer writer on The Simpsons, I was able to kind of, even though like everything, it was rewritten and made a thousand times better by the group and the, and everyone that I was able to at least convince the group that this is a bananas, ambitious, conceptual show worthy of doing. And, you know, and then we pulled it off as a team. So I'm going to say trilogy of error. 
Remember me by Trilogy of Error. If I choke eating Chinese food tonight. That's how I keep Remember telling me the writer. Remember as being a team member. That's, mm -hmm. that's a good answer again, man. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> this next one is by... Uh, his name is uh, is Padrag. I, again, apologize if I mispronounce this. How long does it take to record an episode, and is everyone in the same studio recording together? I actually am very awesome curious question. Awesome question. Awesome question. The way we used to do the show was all the actors would record the script together like a play, they break the episode down into scenes, like say eight scenes, and then they would go through each scene. All... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I should have turned that. I should have put that on silent. Wait, hold on. I think I can do that. Hold for cell phone. Sorry. Hold for cell phone. Um, the, so the way it used to be was the whole cast would be there. They would record the whole show, start to finish, broken down into like eight scenes. They would do each scene like three or four times. They're talking to each other. They're interplaying. There's energy there. Um, and then maybe if there was a specific line you wanted reread, you would have one actor do just just that line a couple times with a in a certain inflection or you know angrier, sadder, louder, faster, etc. Sillier. But now, and this was sort of happening as our actors you know, moved around the country and started doing other jobs. Now we kind of break it down actor by actor. And then we edited it all together. And especially now, of course, Zoom, COVID, everything. That's the only way to do it. So, yeah. so now it's done individually where we'll just take all of the great Dan Castellaneta, Homer, Groundskeeper Willie, Grandpa, you know, a thousand other great characters. Um, we, he'll record just all of his lines for a given episode in one like hour long session, just kind of doing either doing one scene at a time or doing each line a bunch of times. And then we will listen to those, edit the best ones, and then edit them in with the other actors who we recorded separately. So, mm. you know, in a perfect world, the, everyone would love it if the actors could be together in the same room and feel each other's yeah. performance and energy but now um, horrible future stuff and technology have gotten in the way of that. So I don't even know how long it takes. It used to take about two hours in the old days. Now it takes thousands of 45 minute chunks. My God. You definitely, if you add it up now, it takes longer to do it separately than to do everyone at once. Mm -hmm. Luckily I delegate Jeez. most of that now to my other super producers on the show. Let them worry about picking the best. Picking. The, I used to worry a lot about picking the best takes and making sure I hadn't missed the best takes. But now I, unfortunately, and I love doing it. Now I have to trust my collaborators to do that for me. Mm hmm. Wow. Well, thank you for that. Um, a lot of work. We have two more questions <laughs> left. Okay. Second to last question is by Richard. Why do you think The Simpsons are still going strong since being on the air since the late 80s? Come on. Well, you know, I might. The answer to this is a little similar to the answer to question number one, which is, you know, what goes into making a great episode, or in my opinion. And it's a little bit of that same thing, but I'll try to put a spin on it, which is as much as we try to keep the show fresh and new. And, you know, events incorporate trends, incorporate how society and technology and the world has changed. You know, the, re the main reason is that the characters are great and they, they don't change. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the connection between the characters is relatable to the audience and their families. I mean, around the world, you know, of, of people in many nations of many, you know, different belief systems connect to these characters and there's a basic family union in a basic weird, dumb town and the universality of father, son, son, sister, sister, mom, mom, dad, you know, baby, grandpa, bartender, comic book guy, like those 
characters that like not created by me, you know, created by Matt Groening, Jim Brooks, Sam Simon, Al Jean, Mike Reese, all these great original writers, you know, those are, you know, people love those people and they still connect to them. So maybe that's the answer. Keep it old and keep it new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect balance. I mean, I, in my humble opinions, the most iconic animated show of all time. I, I don't think many people would disagree. So again, thank you so much for being a part of this with us. And hey, very, well, very last question. More. Very last question comes from Benjamin. Is it hard? This is a good one. Is it hard <laughs> not to laugh out loud when someone else has a funny line during the recording sessions for the show? And how do you stay in character when you are on the verge of laughing? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a that's a good question. It is hard, and it was more hard when we were in person because now we can just mute ourselves. But like, mm -hmm. you know, when we were recording live, directing the actors, you had to like bite your arm not to laugh and ruin the take. And there are some producers on the show who are famous, iconic producers who laughs have famously ruined takes. And, you know, <laughs> then you just try it again. So, you know, the actors are so funny. And especially when we were with them in person, hopefully again someday, Yeah, you know, you really have to kind of have a good biting spot ready on your wrist or lower arm to keep yourself from laughing because then you if you laugh over a, you're the funniest take you might never get that funniest take again so it, mm -hmm. go prepared because it is hard benjamin <laughs> well you tricked us all i have a feeling you prepared <laughs> this and then told us you didn't prepare it and every question was absolutely perfect <laughs> and i can't thank you enough for it was all us scripted. Time I remember I was up all night memorizing that script, word for word. Yeah, I'm. I'm there's cue cards right behind your camera. <laughs> I, I I could tell. Uh, but seriously, thank you so much for ha for for joining us. This is the first ever Fox TV Fan Hub, so it is an honor to have you. Oh my god! And it's an honor to be here. Thank Simpsons, you so much. The Simpsons returns September 26th only on Fox. Right, thank right. you, man. The brand new super all musical premiere more music we've ever jammed into a show the most if they're still recording this the most musical simpsons ever with it's like a broadway show about a broadway show it's got kirsten bell and more music than, and homer tap dancing oh on the toilet in his underwear you're gonna love it yeah everybody tune in it's gonna be epic and again thank you so much man thank you